You're listening to the Womanpreneur Podcast. Empowerment in business and life. Welcome back to another episode of the Womanpreneur Podcast. My name is Melissa Motes, and I am here with my awesome friend during her birthday week, Amanda McEwen. Hello. Hey, girl. Well, was, it's birthday week as we're recording this. By the time anybody hears it, it will have passed. But Yeah, yeah but right now it's your birthday, birthday week. I know, yeah. but it's it's still your birthday week, and I've been celebrating it. it for days. <laughs> well, thank you. At least somebody has. <laughs> it's been good. So what are we going to talk about today with our amazing uh, tribe? Uh, today it's about the little things. So we, we've done episodes or an episode about gratitude. We talk about gratitude a lot. And I think it's almost easier to be grateful for the big things in our lives. And sometimes, especially in the midst of a very stressful situation, sometimes you just need to find joy in the little things. Like be grateful for the big things, but there's so many little everyday tiny things that if we just focus on those, I think it helps us get through when when everything else seems like it's falling apart around us. It's that idea of finding the one good thing in any situation. It's finding them all around us. They're just sometimes they're just little. Yeah, I'm with you. The little tiny joys. And uh, I've been taking a little time to take notice of more of those. And like today, um, I'm in my sound booth right now while we're recording this. This is where I do all my voiceover work every day of my life. And uh, the sound quality in here, by the way, is going to be amazing for our podcast. And I just want to say that I'm grateful for that. It's a little thing, but it's like, man, talk about, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. I'm in my bubble that I always spend most of my time in. (laughs) So I didn't have to even drive today. I just got to hang out. So I worked, but so I'm grateful for that fact that I didn't even have to like drive. I like not driving. I actually have to drive sometime very soon because I haven't been in my car for two weeks. I have to make sure the battery doesn't die. So I need to go for a drive around the block or something just to make sure that the uh, you know, car battery still still can charge up when I need it. Yeah, well, go around the block, uh, do a couple laps, see if it still works. It's good. Well, I made a list, Amanda McEwen. I'm just going to get right in there. I'm going to talk about <laughs> sure some things. Did. Because you guys all know I like a good list. And I made a little, just a, a few few bullet points here on things that I've been paying a little more attention to. You know that old saying, the best things in life are free? Well, a lot of this stuff doesn't cost any money at all. It's stuff that I've been like, you know what? Can't go anywhere. Can't see anybody right now. But this is stuff that I like. Here it comes. You ready? First thing. <laughs> go for it. I like time with me. I enjoy hanging out with myself. I'm my best friend. (laughs) And that might sound really silly. (laughs) You know what it makes me think of? What? Because, of course, we always have to make an 80s reference. Have you seen the movie Spaceballs? I don't think I ever saw Spaceballs. Okay. It's kind of a Star Wars parody mockumentary not mockumentary but it just kind of makes fun of star wars but it's a very funny 80s movie there's a character that john candy played called mog he's half man half dog he's his own best friend well there you go well i'm kind of that way too like i enjoy hanging out with myself i'm like you know what i i know exactly what i like to do I like to hang out. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to sit here and enjoy some sunshine and uh, just more time for myself. So that's been one thing that I've been making a little bit of time for. Um, I think it's important for people, right? In general, I always think people need to spend more time by by themselves to get to really know who they are. And a lot of people are, are kind of scared of it. They don't like to be alone for whatever reason. But in this time when a lot of us are forced to be alone, I think it helps, hopefully, if people are doing a little self-reflection and, and maybe coming to that appreciation that just like you, you know, you're, you're pretty awesome. I'm a good Thanks, person girl. to spend some time with. 
Yeah, like I, I definitely don't have any problems with, I know we've talked about this in the past, but like going to a restaurant by myself or going to see a movie by myself. And I used to live alone before I met Troy and I had my own apartment and stuff. And I enjoyed my me time and my quiet time and just, uh, you know, having a little time to reflect and, and think about things. And, you know, life's always coming at us so fast that the little bit of time I get to myself alone, it's like I'm in my car rushing off to the next thing or I'm taking a shower, but I'm like thinking about the next 10 things I'm going to do. And I know so many people feel the same way and can relate to that. Um, But now it's just kind of like the rush factor is gone. And that was one of the things that was on my list was I am taking um, some extra, you know, appreciation time on just time. You know, I'm like, man, just not having to drive to and from, say, our studio or to and from going to the gym, you know, stuff like that. I've been enjoying just walking outside when it's good for me, you know, when when I can do it. I don't have to hurry and wake up super early and rush off and drive this way and drive that way. And I don't know. I just feel like my schedule's been a lot less rigid and I really like it. You're not having meltdowns about all you want to do is take a shower and eat a sandwich. (laughs) No, I'm not having meltdowns. And speaking of showers, I have been taking some super long, relaxing showers, and those are the best. I actually (laughs) caught myself singing in the shower the other day. I was like busting out some like really great love songs, and I was like, wow, this is nice. When was the last time I sang like a really good, solid love song? while I showered forever ago. So that was good. (laughs) How many love songs have you sang lately, Amanda? I I, zero. Absolutely. With 100% certainty, I can say zero. (laughs) Well, makes your soul feel good. So Uh, what else? What what, what were you going to say? The... (laughs) <laughs> but one thing, well, okay, actually, because she's walking in with it right now, one of the things on my list is just everyday cat silliness. It's, I don't know if you can hear her squeaking, but she's just walked into my office dragging a toy that's three times her length. She has to hold her head up very high as she drags it, otherwise it hits the ground and she can't walk. But she just brought me this toy, and she it's, it's a gift, I guess, but... Just in general, having a cat, is it's a, lots and lots of little things that I really appreciate, whether it's them taking off running down the hallway at full speed for what seems like no reason at all, if it's just the, the cute rolling around on the ground and, and just being cute. I don't know. It just they, She brings me a lot of joy in my life. <laughs> She's a cutie. Yeah, I um my kitty cat too. He's he's enjoying having us more, you know, to himself and Gizmo, 20-year-old lap cat. He loves the attention. So, he's getting more attention than usual, which is he's liking. It's so cute. Well, a couple of other ones that I just uh put on my list today. In addition to long showers, and you know, you're going to make fun of me, Amanda, and that's totally fine. But I like that, like today, I took a little time and I curled my hair and I was like, oh, I don't remember the last time I just was like, I'm going to enjoy the process of putting some extra, it's called love oil. That's what I put in my hair. It's like this really awesome, very nourishing oil that I put on my ends because my hair is blonde and I color treat it. So it gets a little dry, plus living in the desert. So I was like, I'm going to put some love oil on my hair. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to curl my hair. I'm going to put on some makeup. I'm going to put on a little perfume just because I love the way my perfume smells. And I was like, you know what? I feel great. It made me feel so good just to go through that process and not rush. And I was like, I feel really nice today. So I got really nice today for you, Amanda McEwen. Well, thank you. I I appreciate that. I I wish I could say the same (laughs) in return, but not not so much for me. I, I, yeah. It, uh, curling my hair isn't a thing that happens anyway, but especially right now, I know I'm not going to see anybody unless it's on Zoom or some other platform like that. So I, I've stopped drying my hair entirely and I'm just letting it do what it does. Well, your hair looks really pretty. 
Thank you. Um, I'd like a, a little shout out about sleeping. Um, sleeping, it's it's a good thing. Napping, <laughs> waking up. Amanda McEwen, I am all about waking up when my body wants to wake up now. I'm following your lead. And do you know what time my body likes to wake up? My body likes to wake up at about 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Mm-hmm. That's my time. I go to bed <laughs> pretty late. <laughs> Not 5. I've been going to bed about midnight. Um, that's kind of been my new jam. About 12, 12.30. And I've been waking up naturally around 8. And I'm like, holy cow. This is what it feels like to be like Amanda McEwen and wake up without an alarm. And you know what? I don't think I'm going back. I think even after this is all done, whatever, you know, this is, but just being at home, <laughs> I am going to wake up when my body wants to wake up. I've decided. I've made some decisions. Yeah, the, the important question about that as you take that sip of that coffee is now that you're waking up without an alarm, are you still grumpy in the morning or has that changed at all? I have not been grumpy. Troy mm-hmm. is like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I walk out I because he's usually up before me. I walk out of our bedroom and I go, hi. And he says, hi. <laughs> he's so happy to see me. <laughs> you. And I'm smiling and I'm like, hello. I feel really great. I have not been grumpy at all. And um, also, my coffee intake has relaxed. Um, I used to have like a good two, sometimes three cups of coffee in the morning. Most of the time, two was my my normal MO. And then I have one in the afternoon. Now I just have one in the morning and I have one in the afternoon. And the one in the afternoon is just because I enjoy it. But I don't feel like I need to drink a ton of coffee. It's been so nice. Yeah, it's like I know what I'm talking about or something. <laughs> Dang, girl. You but do. I, I, it's but I, I because I genuinely believe that and I know a lot of times people don't have the ability they have to work or have their lives on a certain schedule because of work or whatever it is, but I just I I learned that for myself when I stopped working f- for a company where I had to set an alarm to get up at the same time every day. Is just the the difference where I don't always need as much sleep because I, I just go to sleep when I'm tired. I wake up when I wake up. My energy is always there. My energy levels are the lowest on the days that I have to use an alarm. If I have a really early call time or something like that, it's the only time that I really feel off. But otherwise, you know, that's kind of just part of my thing. It's like I, I wake up, I'm ready to go because I think when you wake up in the, the wrong time of your sleep cycle, and I'm sure, sure there, I'm sure there's science that backs this up. This isn't just yeah. me with some great new epiphany, but I, I really believe that when you wake up at the wrong time in your sleep cycle, it, it'll affect you for the whole rest of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. And I was actually talking with Carissa about that a while ago. And I think she was telling me about some app that um, like if you set your alarm on your phone or whatever device, it'll it, it can detect when you're in like REM sleep versus when you're in between some of those deeper sleep cycles so that it'll start to like kind of nudge you to wake up very gently when it's, you know, when you're in the clear zone the not you know less abrupt zone and I was like ooh, I like that idea but one other one other thing I wrote on my list was I've had a little more time just to re-examine my life and kind of you know take inventory of like what has been serving me well and what hasn't been serving me well and that you know we're on the topic of sleep and that was something that I was just like man I ride myself hard. Like I'm a drill sergeant. I'm hard to I'm hard on myself. Like I did not realize how much like I was pushing myself until I've had this time to just kind of go, "Hey, why don't you just relax a little bit? Why don't you just take it down a couple notches?" Um so I'm grateful one of the little things I have is just that quiet reflection time or reflective time rather of just re-examining and taking inventory of so many things in my life, so many of my own decisions, so many of my own habits. I've been kind of trying to look at my life and myself through a different lens and just really being really real with myself and saying, how can I, how can I be a little kinder to me, which then allows me to be 
you know, my best self to be even better to the people I love and interact with in my life. So that's another one I came up with. How about you, girl? <laughs> well, it's, this is kind of why I started thinking about it, how it's the little things anyways. I, I say it a lot. I've been aware throughout my life that I'm always saying it's all about the little things because I, I think it makes a huge difference. But one of the things that I'm finding a ton of joy with right now, but, and it started with the penguins at the Chicago Aquarium when they let them roam around and go see their other animal friends. Like that on its own, these little videos of penguins wandering around the aquarium and looking at all the other animals there, that alone made me really happy because <laughs> A, I like penguins. <laughs> penguins on their own make me happy, but it was just, it, it was just so cute. And then, but through, I mean, throughout the last few weeks, there've been all kinds of videos of animals who are now out roaming around because all the people are inside. And I, I know some people are really hating being cooped up inside, but I find this strange joy in the role reversal where we're locked, we're essentially locked up right now and the animals are roaming around free. And it's the bears at Yellowstone and there's some goats and uh, whales somewhere. And they're just all of these videos of animals are out and exploring and saying, huh, yeah, all the people are out of the way. I'm going to go play for a little bit. And I think they deserve it is. that time. It just it makes me happy. <laughs> me too. I second that. Yeah, Troy and I were just talking about that, like, um, in L.A., I guess, you know, just seeing all of the interstates practically empty and some of the wildlife that's been kind of coming out, you know, even out onto the interstates and stuff. and. I was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't even think about that and how what a huge impact that this would have on all the wildlife. But that's really cool. That is really cute. Yeah, I've the got air's clean. Go the water's clean. There's everything cleaned up now. And, and it's good that they, they get a, a little time to go roam around and, and be be their natural animal selves. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Speaking of animals, that's one thing too. I have been taking my daily walk outside every day in my neighborhood. And two things, actually three things about that that are huge to me. One, I love the fresh air and the sunshine. I know how you feel about that, but about the sunshine part, but I do love it. I ha I keep my hat on and um, you know, I'm I'm somewhat protected, but the thing that I've been noticing is I'm like, man, I didn't realize how many birds I had in my neighborhood and how loud they chirp. And I mean, they're like going to town. I've been on my walks and I'm like, hey, keep it down a little bit, guys. Jeez, you mind <laughs> trying to listen to my music over here? No, I'm just kidding. But they're so cute. And I've, I've noticed that. Um, love the simplicity of just. Oh, go ahead. Oh, well, because I, I have birds on my list, too. Because You it, do? Well, it, I do because it's it's springtime and so the, there's more birds anyway, but also I feel like they're more out there because the people aren't. And it's been really nice weather-wise in Las Vegas uh, in recent weeks. So sometimes I'll just have my back door open and just it just in the quiet and just listening to all the birds because I like how they talk to each other because there's so many different types and I, you know, I, I kind of want to know what the conversation is. Not important, but I, I like to listen to those different sounds and it, yeah. to me, I just find it very peaceful because I, I will, I just will not have any other, no music, no, nothing playing. Just let me listen to nature. A lot, a lot of the things on my list I've, I've noticed are nature related. So <laughs> it is really comforting and relaxing. And I, I love it too. Uh, the birds, especially that's cool that we both had birds on our list. Um, another thing that I wrote down was, um, I've, I've met a lot more of my neighbors, even though we're all social distancing, I've noticed that so many of my neighbors are now outside and they're walking around and it's just been really cool to, I can be on one side of the block walking and they can be across the street, but I could easily say, Hey, how's it going? What, 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 you know, which house do you live in? And they'll point out their house or whatever. And I've met some of my really sweet neighbors and their dogs and had some really nice little conversations. And most of the time I just don't see a lot of people out walking. I know people do at different times, but I mean, at any given time, I'll be outside walking in my neighborhood and I'll see 20 different people. And again, we're all keeping our distance and doing what we can, but everyone's just, it's been nice to just interact and meet people that way. I, I really appreciate it. 
One of the little things that I appreciate in general, but it seems more so now, is just good conversation. Because I think so many people are cooped up and they're they're reaching out more and we're talking about things that aren't necessarily work. And I'm part of it being my birthday week, you know, I had, had people call that you don't normally talk to all the times, but I just had really good conversations this week of just about life in general, but not the specifics of what's going on in the world. Just good, positive, introspective, just good conversations. And I, I, I know when I hang up a phone, whether it's an actual phone call or it's one of these Zoom chats or anything else, but just having better conversations. It, it's it's just one of those little things I've always appreciated because so much of the day to day is that small talk, which we all know I don't like the hi, how are you? And the the questions that I don't like because I want to talk about the deeper stuff. And that that seems to be happening a lot more because people are, are taking more I don't know. They're just, I think it's been being more introspective right now because there's all this extra time and they're, you're, we're all kind of being forced to look inward. And then it's kind of a curiosity and wanting to know if other people are doing the same things or feeling the same things. So it's just expanded the good conversation lately, I think. So even though we can't be social in person, I feel that people are being more social overall. There's people that I'm connecting with who live in different states who I just never talk to because of the distance. And now it's like, well, yeah, this technology has always been here. So what's what's our excuse? Let's let's be better at this. Yeah, it's interesting that you just about what you just said, because like my folks, you know, they live in the Chicago suburbs and we talk on the phone. You know, I talk to them at least once a week. And um, over the weekend, uh, I was like, I can't remember. Oh, I know what it was. My parents were doing some home improvement projects and my dad was sending me some pictures and I said, dad, why don't we FaceTime and you can give me a tour? And he was like, oh, what a great idea. So we FaceTimed and I felt like I just hung out with my parents for like an hour and a half. We had so much fun and it was such a more... I don't know. I just felt so much more connected with them, seeing their faces and being able to really... I just felt like I spent time with them in a different way than just how a regular phone call would feel. And then I showed them a few things that we had done around the house since the last time they'd visited. And I had such a blast. And then when I got off the phone with my parents, then I called my brother and I was like, hey, I'm going to FaceTime you. And he's like, I don't want to FaceTime. And I said, too bad. You're going to. And so I FaceTimed him and we had the same thing. We had a total blast and he had done some projects and showing me some of his cool stuff in his yard. And same thing. I'm like, man, I feel like we just hung out. We need to do this more often. It's so cool. So it's like rediscovering tools and things that we have at our fingertips that we just overlook, you know? It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. What else do you have on your list, Amanda McEwen? Do you have a list? What, I, one of my favorite things always is rain. I, I love rain. I always have it, it. I think it's part of just growing up in Colorado where we had really good thunderstorms. But no matter where I am, anytime it rains, I'm automatically happy. And it just last weekend in Vegas, we had a really nice rainstorm. It even hailed for a little while, which is pretty unusual. But it was the what I really like when it rains here is sometimes the air outside is warm. I mean, it was almost eight, I think it was 70 degrees that day, but it was it was kind of warm outside. But then the rain is cool and it's just as nice. So it's not like you're freezing cold. Like when it rains, when it's cold outside, that can be a little uncomfortable. But when it rains, when it's warm outside, there's just something about it. I will go stand out or sit outside in the rain and get soaked and not care at all. It just, so there's something about it. And in Colorado, this doesn't happen in Vegas, unfortunately, but the smell of rain in Colorado, the mountain rain, it's my favorite smell in the entire world. And so anytime, even just a few sprinkles, and it just makes me happy inside. Aw, that's awesome. Yeah, I've, I've not smelled rain in Colorado specifically, but there's definitely... Uh, an aroma about the rain that I do really appreciate. Um, what? Did, oh, I had um, more time to write because I've been wanting to do more blog writing for like Medium, for example. That's that platform you introduced me to a while ago. And 
I just like haven't had my confidence up to like really write some blogs that I've been wanting to write and just kind of do some writing just, just from my heart, you know, and just put some time on that. And I've had some time to kind of play around a little bit and I've caught myself coming up with some cool inspired thoughts, some cool ideas. And that's one thing that I think is really important is in life, whenever um, you get a really great idea or you have inspired thought that just kind of happens, you know, some kind of inspiration to write something or inspiration to do something or call someone or, you know, take action on something. I think that it's really important to to follow it. And sometimes in the daily grind, we might have some inspired thought that pops into our head, but it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to do that. That was a cool idea. But I've had some time to really embrace some of my inspired thought with some writing and then immediately sit down and write it. And I'm really happy with some of the stuff that has come out of that. So that's been kind of cool. Thanks. Take advantage of the time while you have it. Yeah. Uh, Another nature related one for me is is, again, this happens no matter what's going on in the world. I'm always happy to see a good sunrise or a sunset. Mm. Like without fail, it doesn't matter where I am, what time of day it is. If the sky is pretty, it'll make me happy. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. I second that. That is amazing. I love um, sunsets are what I seem to see a lot more of. But <laughs> I remember when Troy and I went on our um, 20th anniversary trip last summer, our cruise, and we were getting up in time to see the sunrise almost every day. So it was so wild to see the sunrise and the sunset. And it was just, oh, it was so awesome. I said, man, I need to get up early more (laughs) often to see this like at home. But, but we know how I feel about that now. (laughs) Forget that. Right. That was, you know, one of those things that's, I guess it's kind of a bigger thing, but also a little thing that I'm happy about is that I got to go to my niece's wedding in Hawaii right before all of this happened. Like that was the first week of March that I was in Hawaii and I, I got in my, my little beachfront house that I rented and every morning, I mean, there's giant windows facing the ocean. So I, I'd naturally wake up early anyway, but I would just watch the sun every morning. I would walk up and go down the stairs and right there is the beach. And I would just go sit there for 15, 30 minutes, however long it took, but I would just watch the whole process of the sunrise every morning Sometimes it was raining too. So, because there's three, three of my favorite things in the world, oceans, rain, sunrises. So I had all three of those every day for a few days. And that was kind of the last thing that happened before the quarantine. So (laughs) I'm very grateful that all of that happened. And I had that one last trip where I just got to sit outside and breathe the air, hear the nature, listen to the ocean for hours sometimes, because that's just that. The ocean is one of the things on my list, too. It, it, I, I, there's something very calming and healing to me about an ocean. Even if you're not in it, just watching it, just listening to it, there's just something that's very yeah. relaxing to me about that. Just being close to the water, I, I feel that way, too. Um, just, just I, I feel so drawn to the water and to the ocean. So I can just sit beside it. I don't even have to get into it. I will. I do. But... Just sitting sitting on the beach is just as relaxing as being in it. So I'm with you, girl. Man, we need to go on a trip together. We need a girls' trip. We need a girls' trip where we can just sit on a beach and, you know, I don't know. We'll make an agenda. Listen to birds. Wa- watch the sunrise. Watch the sunset. <laughs> Eat a lot of dessert. <laughs> I think we'd be really good travel buddies. <laughs> <laughs> Would it surprise you that dessert is on my list of the little things? <laughs> um, I was wondering about that because I was going to say one of the things that I've done a little bit more of on this time that we've had at home is I've been experimenting more with cooking and more recipes. And I know you have done some baking. So I was going to ask you about that. How, you said your cookies that you made were delicious and they went really fast. Well, I, I don't have a lot of restraint when I have dessert in the house. So part of the reason I, I don't I don't bake well 
Uh, I just never have. And it's weird because I can cook well, but baking, which you think, knowing me, baking is just measuring things, right? Like it's pretty specific. You have to be precise. Cooking is more abstract, but I, I do much better in the cooking realm. Plus, when you're baking, you have to bake a whole batch of something. And being that I am just one person, I don't need a whole batch of cookies. So I found this one recipe and I make half of it. And it's ve it's a vegan recipe, but it's still, they're very tasty and they come out well. But I, I'm just kind of doing that, using what I have in the pantry, trying to figure out if there's stuff that I can make and I'm experimenting. But I would just think not just dessert on its own, because we all know how happy dessert makes me. Even thinking about it now, I'm just happy. But it, it was dessert or any really good food. Is that just that the I don't know. I mean, we I I think we figured out that I'm I like to eat. <laughs> so food is a big <laughs> part of my life. But there's just something about that when you have a really good meal and just it just kind of brings you that joy where it's not just sustenance, it's actual enjoyment of what you're consuming. I'm I'm a big fan of that. Taking some time to enjoy your food, not just wolf it down really quick because you got to hurry up and get on to the next thing. I definitely rush through meals. I don't know if you ever do, but there are a lot of days where I'm like lucky if I do eat versus if I do eat, I'm like hurrying and I'm like getting, I'm like eating on the go in my car on my way. And that's just not as enjoyable. I know you won't, you know. I, I'm, that's, that's another thing, you know, that I've just been like, rules. I can taste my food and chew it and just sit here with it and love it. <laughs> I Are you hugging I, your food because you can't hug the people? I, right. Well, that's been hard for me not to hug the people. I'm going to hug everyone. I'm going to hug everyone who will allow me to hug them when we get past all this. But I, I have, have a sign that says, no, still not hugging. Still not hugging. That's okay. And then I will be like, hugs, open for business right here. That's me. <laughs> I just, that's one of the things I love about you and I. It's like, like we say, our values and our work ethic and so many things are so the same, but like, we're so opposite on so many things. Completely. It's like <laughs> the perfect yin and yang balance. I I have really discovered, um, I've re- connected with my love and joy for peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> I've sometimes it's a simple little thing like that, like this childhood meal meal. I don't even know if you can call that a meal, but it's it's pretty tasty. I've been eating peanut butter and jellies. So like the other night, I, I taught one of my classes online for the studio, had a great class, came out. I'm all like happy dancing, literally happy dancing. And Troy's like, wow, you're really on a high right now. And I was like, this is called a teaching high. I was like, we had so much fun in the class. And I was like, now I'm starving and I want to lay around and eat a peanut butter and jelly. So I had a peanut butter and jelly at like 10 o'clock at night. And then I was, I've been really into some shows on Netflix. One I started watching like two years ago, and I don't know what happened. I just stopped watching it because I think I was distracted with another show. But it's called Big Little Lies. Uh, oh, that's it's like a good Reese, one. oh Reese Witherspoon and Nicole Kidman, <laughs> and I just binged the whole first season in like four days. And so I stayed up late. And I'm watching all these episodes. I finished the first season last night. Holy nice. <laughs> Holy, that's all I got. I had my PBJ, yeah. and I was like, man, I'm so happy right now. So I've been enjoying some some show watching. Hey, do you have good. Hulu? I do. Okay. Um, put on your list Little Fires Everywhere. It also has Reese Witherspoon. It also has Kerry Washington. It's okay. excellent. It's, it's based on a book, but the production value is really good. The storytelling is intriguing. The acting is amazing. It's little fires everywhere. It's it's currently my new favorite show. And okay. the, the good or bad thing, I'm not sure, is they only release one episode a week because it's one that I would easily binge in a day. But it's I have to wait from week <sighs> to week, but it's, it's really good. Man. So I'm just going to put that on out there for you. I, and anybody I'll else check it out. Day. Yeah, I trust you. And and any if, if you have not seen Big Little Lies, holy holy, first season was great. I can't wait to watch the second season. I'm gonna start that like 
probably tonight, and then I will I will get to your show. But I will check it out. That sounds amazing. <laughs> well, because one of the things on my list, it's it's getting lost in anything, whether it's music, a good book, a TV show. I think that's one of the little things that I, I appreciate from time to time. Also, is just sometimes we need to let go of the 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 real world and escape into something else. And there's just something that is relaxing that kind of frees our mind up a little bit to focus on something else, even if it's total fiction. I just think there, there's something to be said for doing that. Maybe not saying that you're binging a series every single day and you're not doing anything else, but sometimes you just need that. And especially when you find one that's really, really good. There's like, for me, it's usually an album where I can just sit and listen to all the songs Sometimes I know some people get really wrapped up into books. Sometimes it's a podcast, uh, especially if there's a serial podcast. Well, actually, the podcast called Serial is a good example because that one was kind of addicted too. I know for a lot of people, it's the true crime podcast. They get just hooked on and just want to hear the next episode right away. But I think sometimes getting lost in those things is very beneficial. It is. Because if we get, give our minds a chance to just interrupt all of the, the patterns and structure and routines that we have, um, I don't know, it's just like, it's, it's like vacation. It's vacation for your soul and your mind and, and you're, you're connecting with your imagination and, you know, you're creating theater of the mind for yourself. Like when you're listening to a story being told or you're reading a good book and, oh, it's so good for the soul and, and the heart and the mind. I, I love it. I've done a little bit of reading too for fun. Um, cause I, I say reading for fun because, I read all day for work. So it's, it's, and not that my work isn't fun, but I mean, when I'm reading stuff, I'm like interpreting it and analyzing it and applying performance tex- techniques to it. And it's just like a whole different world of reading. So a lot of times when I'm done working for the day, the last thing I want to do is read. Uh, I do like to listen to audiobooks, but, uh, but I have actually been really enjoying some reading lately, which has been really nice. Like fun reading. <laughs> fun reading. And it's, good. it's been fun. It's been very fun. <laughs> I'm trying to see what else I have on my list. Oh, I know what I have on my list. I have one more. I just want to say pizza. <laughs> yep, that, that goes back to, to my, my idea that any really good food, there's just something about it. Tell me more about your thoughts on pizza, Melissa Boats. Oh, I just love pizza. It's probably <laughs> one of my favorite foods. And I haven't had to rush when I've been eating anything. So I've been just like so enjoying eating pizza. And I've been eating a lot of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> what and what I, is your, your pizza of choice? I like margarita pizza a lot. Yeah, that's that's my all-time fave. Um, I don't know why I don't like meat on my pizza and I'm not vegetarian, but I really, I, I've looked at my diet and I would say I am about 80% vegetarian. Um, I really don't eat a ton of meat or chicken or whatever. I, I eat a lot of, um, like vegetables and salads and like margarita pizza, PBJs. (laughs) It's like, especially like the last few weeks, but I've been savoring my food. I've been savoring my pizza and I did find one at Smith's that I really like. It surprised me. I'm almost afraid to share it because uh, I don't want everybody to like eat them all because I I want to make sure there are enough in my life. But because I do share, I will tell you, um, it's by private selection. It's at, it's at Smith's or at Kroger. Um and it's like a, it's called a um, buffalo mozzarella. Uh, it's basically a margarita pizza. Holy, holy. The crust is so good. The sauce is so good. And I have a pizza pizzazz. Do you know what that is? I have no idea what that is. A pizza pizzazz is this amazing piece of equipment. It's an appliance for your kitchen. My mom actually bought it for me. Um, You can get them on Amazon 
and it's called Pizza Pizzazz. And it's just this little contraption that goes on your counter, and then you actually place your pizza on top of the this round, you know, like pan, if you would, and it rotates and it cooks the pizza from underneath and on top with the light and the heat, and it perfectly cooks your pizza. Like crispy perfection, cheese melted perfection, just like it came out of, you know, some kind of a stone oven situation. It's so good. So that's all I got. Now I really, now I really want pizza, man. I know. <laughs> I don't have any. I, Darn I tend it. to get the, it, very rarely do I eat a frozen pizza, but I will get Amy's brand margarita pizzas. Ooh, like those, those are good lot. too. I love yeah. Amy's margarita. <laughs> that's really good. That's a, that's that's my go to if I'm going to get a frozen pizza. But try private yeah. selection. It's really it's a it's right up there with Amy's. It's really good. Maybe. All right. Good to know. Making notes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of one of my things is when a song gives you goosebumps. And that's to, just to me, it's one of the greatest things. And I think that for me personally, that goes to the, the I, I don't feel a lot of emotions. So when a song can affect me in that way, I think that's why music is such a big part of my life, because that's something that I can actually connect to in that way that I think normal humans connect to most most other humans. <laughs> but for me, it, sometimes it's it's restricted to music. But sometimes there's just a song and just hearing it. It doesn't matter where you are. It'll, it'll have that effect. And I'm a big fan of that. It's one of those things I, I always appreciate that. That's awesome. I like songs that make me cry. <laughs> so when you're singing uh, love songs in the shower, are they sad love songs and you're crying? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not crying in the shower. I'm just, I just like a really good like belty ballad. I like to just like really belt out a really good love song when I'm, my my acoustics in my bathroom are amazing. So <laughs> what can you say? Yes. But yeah, no, I can, I can respect that. Oh, yeah. I got to readjust. I'm like, can my... I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm sitting. Why do you do that? It's for <laughs> definitely this whole situation. I know has given us both a much bigger appreciation. It's one that we already had, but we definitely have more for our team and our studio and our quality production because recording from home. Even I, hopefully, I can do something about it. But the last like ten minutes, my neighbors have been had their motorcycle rumbling. And so I'm just listening. I'm like, you have, of all times, you have to pick right now, right outside my window to just let that thing run. And I'm watching the audio thing, the little, little home. And yeah. it's, but there's nothing I can do about it. And like on this episode, probably Melissa Motz's VO is nice and nice and clean because she's in a padded soundproofed room and I don't have that. So I'm always going to be a little bit echoey, but it's, you know, we, we're, I'm, I'm grateful that we have technology that has allowed us to keep moving forward despite the other circumstances, but I yes. also definitely miss our team and our gear and our sound and all that stuff. <laughs> I know. And our face-to-face. -face. Yeah, it's, it's really tough doing it this way. A, I, I don't think that I get to make the same reaction faces because there's just a, a little bit of a delay and we have to kind of gauge when you're done talking and then I can talk. And when I'm done, it's just, it's a little more complicated than doing it, it in person. The, the, the engagement is, it's there, but it's different. It is different. Nothing beats face to face. And that's a, a couple of things I want to say just re regarding the little things is I definitely have a new appreciation for <sighs> Some things that I guess I guess I can say I took for granted, you know, which is just something as simple as seeing the people that I love to see in person, you know, and just what that feels like, just being in the same room and sharing the energy with someone. Um, I can't wait to get back to that. I'm just I'm so I thrive on that. And um, that's something I'm never going to take take for granted again. And just. I don't know, just like my, my routine, just all the little things that I do day in and day out, the little places I go, the people I interact with. Um, I don't know. I just, I really, I really appreciate all the people in my life. And 
I've missed a whole bunch of them. So I'm going to have a whole new appreciation for that. I think that's that that would be the hope in all of this and moving forward is that when things return to normal or the new normal or whatever is going to happen, that we can take some of these lessons with us, see what we've learned from this situation, appreciate things more, the big things too. But if, if you I really believe that if you can just start now while things are uncertain and people are stressed and things are maybe a little bit icky to use the word that we use sometimes, just every, every time you can, just pay attention to what's around you. Find one little thing that will make you happy. When you're in your home and there's not much going on and you're feeling sad, just look around. Find one thing that, that can make you happy. And just sometimes that one thing in that one moment is just that's all you need. And then it, you become more actively aware of all those little things around you that make life good. And somehow that makes it easier to get through the times that maybe aren't as great. My, my bubba, my grandma, she... I remember when I was a really little girl, um, we were talking about her morning and she would say, you know what I love to do? I, I love to get up every morning and make my coffee and sit by myself and just look at my house inside and just, um, she said, just I just sit and just appreciate everything that I have. And that was her ritual for herself every day. She says, I just look around at everything on the walls and on the floor and everything I have and everything that surrounds me. And she says, I just sit there and I appreciate it. And she said, sometimes it actually brings me to tears. And I thought I was really grateful that she taught me that. Because there are a lot of times I catch myself in the morning if if I'm up, with, if Troy doesn't happen to be here and we're not talking, you know, having a conversation or whatever, and I'm just alone. I love to just sit around and just kind of look at my home and go, man, I'm so thankful for my home and and everything that it brings me and the way my home makes me feel. Or sometimes I'll sit out in my backyard and enjoy, you know, my coffee or whatever and just look around at everything and just go, man, I have such deep gratitude for all this. So that's one thing, you know, that I was really grateful that that she taught me and shared with me because it stuck with me even as a kid. Are you there? I, I'm still here. I, I thought you were going to wrap things up and then you stopped talking. So we <laughs> see everybody listening. This is what happens is sometimes, yeah, the technology makes it a, a little bit. We, we There's a lot of signals, nonverbal cues that we give each other just in, in all human interactions. And, and those things I know are really tricky to navigate in this new, not new, but this, this, uh, version of using technology to record personal conversations. Definitely. And yeah, that's, it's funny. I think, uh, in our last uh, episode, di didn't I keep saying back to you, Amanda? <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I don't remember. I haven't listened I to it back. I feel like it was uh, very news anchorish, like, and back to you, back to you, Amanda McEwen. It was just like, because... Yeah, because see, we can't always tell like when each other's done. So oh, <laughs> we gosh. need to figure out some kind of symbol. This, yeah. If I start doing, I'm just doing weird hand things on the on the camera now, just to I don't know. We'll we'll figure it out, but we will. We're still having fun doing it. This is what happens. <laughs> well, I, we hope you enjoyed, uh, you know, tuning in and hanging out with us. Thinking about the the little things, the simple things that make life so great, and hopefully some of the things we talked about sparked joy for you, made you smile, um, got you thinking about the things that you love and you appreciate in your life, and we just we just hope we made you smile today. Thanks for tuning into the Womanpreneur Podcast. Until next time, you've got this. <laughs>